Hey everyone, Eric here. And today we're going beyond SketchUp Desktop in order to find some context information to bring into our model to help us with the site analysis process. So by site analysis, I mean that when you have a site, often we find ourselves wanting to bring in context from around the site. For example, existing buildings, roads, parks, rivers, train stations, anything that might influence our design or how we communicate our design. So let's take a look at a great free resource online where we can go get some of that information and bring it into SketchUp and we'll go from there. Let's do it. So I've already geolocated my model here. I've got a project site that I wanna look at. It's right here in downtown Los Angeles. I've got a little walking circle I've already built. So I've started this process just by using the geolocation information here by going to add location. So I know where my project is, but from here, it doesn't really tell me very much. Downtown LA is quite dense. And by the look out of it, it doesn't look dense. Um, so anyway, that's our starting point. Let's see if we can get some information to add to our model. It'll kind of literally elevate our analysis. So I'm gonna pop out of SketchUp and we're gonna go over to a web browser and you wanna find this website right here. It's called cadmapper.com. So CAD Mapper, and you will need a free account. So make sure you have an email or permission to use someone's email here. And within that, I'm gonna go ahead and pop over. I'm signed in already. So if I click here, and I've already searched for Los Angeles, but if I wanted to do that again, I can just type in Los Angeles to see what's available. And it's gonna take me to the city of LA. Now, I can just navigate here to my site. I'm over here kind of near Pershing Square, a little bit north, right there. You can see if you look at this bar right here, you can get up to 100 kilometers, which is a huge site area, but you can get a free file for anything below one kilometer square. So there's a little price right here that just tells you how much it costs if you're above one kilometer. Now for this project, this demo, I think we can see how much we can get in one kilometer surrounding this little park site that I wanna do an analysis for. So I'll kind of center my site there. There's some settings here if you want, you can check. We've got Adobe Illustrator, but of course we're going into SketchUp. So let's make sure that SketchUp is checked. The topography, now this may not be something you want to use if your site is relatively flat. It's probably better just to show it as flat, but this site actually does sit on a slope. So I'm gonna to check topography and I could do contours, but I'm not gonna worry about that. I can always add contours later. So if everything else looks good, I can just say create file, and it should just take a second to process all that information to pull it from the server, probably coming from some open data sources. And there it is. So you can see it's got parks, it's got roads, it's got buildings, and it's gonna vary by location. So some places may not look as good as this. Um, other places might look better. So here's what it looks like in 2D. Here's what it looks like the topographic map. So you can see where the height is. That's why I really wanted that because I knew it sits on this hill and looks good to me. Let's download it. So I'm gonna click download. It's in my downloads folder now. And I'm just gonna go ahead and open that up in SketchUp. So here's where we started. And here is where we are at now. So if I pull open my tags panel, you can see that it's got some different tags already set up for you. Now, one way I like to do this is sometimes I'll just put color by tag on. So right now everything just turned sort of dark gray, but then I just kind of choose the colors. I'll do gray, so highways, the roads, I'll leave the same parks. I'm gonna make sort of a greenish color so that I can see those better. Pathways, maybe make them orange so they stand out. Uh, water, if there is any, blue, that would make sense. And then the topography, because it sits on the ground, I'm gonna make that a light gray. And so this is just kind of an easier way to see what's going on. I can also maybe do some cleanup, may wanna come over here and turn my profiles off. Okay, so there's some Z fighting there, that's happening because the roads are sitting on the topography. So if I wanna change that, I could just pull the topography down, maybe just down something like five feet. And then that'll get rid of that Z fighting so that when you kind of view it, whether that's from above or below, um, you can see that that looks nice. Now, I also, you can see some of the buildings came in with some lines, so that's okay. Basically, I can select everything. 
on the same tag. Maybe come over to Window, Soften Edges, and Soften Coplanar. And that's going to get rid of some of those extra lines. And then again, depending on your editing, depending on what you want to do, um, you can go ahead and do some more changes. But I think that's good. That's pretty much all I want to do. I'm going to group everything together. And then I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to come over here and paste it into the sort of geolocated model that I already had set up. So let's turn my location terrain on and move my walk circle up. And we'll go ahead and paste that model in place. Probably not going to line up because I can't imagine that the geolocation reference points were the same. Uh, so that's okay. A little, a little bit of an alignment that we may need to do. Let's see here. Which building do we want to use? We can use this tower. Let's use this tower right here because I know that that shows up in my model. It shows up right about there. You can see I'm just kind of repositioning or aligning those. And then there you go. So now I've got this 3D context that may or may not sit exactly where I want it to on the slope. I'm going to get it as close as possible. I've got my walk circle there. That does not need to show when I'm tilted in my axis in my axonometric. That sort of just wants to show when I'm in plan view. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. And we'll turn our shadows off. We don't need those. So that's it. Now I've got some context. So when I go into plan view, and if I turn off my location snapshot, and I turn off my axis, and I turn off my profiles, you can see that I now have some information that I can use in my analysis. So if I wanted to do a shadow analysis, for example, I could turn shadows on. And I might want to choose three different times a day. Like, so what would it look like in the summer solstice? I might want to try something like 9 a.m. And then I might want to try something like noon. And maybe something again like 3 p.m. And then I can get a sense of what the sun is doing. And then I can export that information so that I can see that my site actually in the afternoon, if you look close here in the afternoon, I'm getting um, some good sun which maybe in LA means that I want to put a shade structure here, but then also it means that I might do something up in the corner of the site where the shade is in the afternoon, because that's actually going to be kind of pleasant. That's the hottest time of day. So whether you want to show the information, let's see, turn shadows off for the walk circle. Whether you want to show the information in 3D or 2D, whether we do it monochromatic or we do it in color, whether we show the location terrain, We've got some choices that we can do now as part of our study where there's our site. Now we have it in context and now we can start to tell a much richer story about how the context influences the site that we're looking for. Now, before I wrap up, I want to show you that we kind of looked at this process in a little bit more detail. So for those that want to go back and see a little bit more about how this has worked and what else you can do with it, I'd recommend you come over to back to our YouTube channel where you found this video and under the live section, then you'll see that we have several streams and this one here that was streamed about a month ago. It's called creating engaging site analysis plans live and urban design workflow. Now I go through this whole process and, and a lot more, a lot more detail, a little bit slower and uh, definitely some cool tips and tricks. I'd recommend checking that out if you're interested, if this is something that you do. So thanks for watching, right? That was quick, but think about it. We've got literally the world digitally at our fingertips, uh, at least for free, less than a kilometer. So get all that information, bring it in, line it up with your location terrain snapshot. And now you've got a much richer set of context to explain how you know, your site should be laid out or some things that you should consider, given the fact that most projects actually live in the real world. So I'm going to leave you there. I'm going to say thanks as always. Don't forget to give us that thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe so you get all the information and notifications for latest content. And I will leave you there with thanks and see you next time.